Welcome along to Somerset Speedway for the start of the 2012 Premier League season. Interleague action uh, starts us off tonight and we've got the Swindon Robins in town providing the opposition. The Rebels have got a great guest at the top of the order, that's Darcy Ward. Uh, Darcy put 16 points at the top of the table for us last night, but it still uh, ended up in a defeat for the Rebels, which maybe wasn't unexpected up at Blunston. We're going to hope to go one better tonight and put one over on the Robins and uh, maybe not get them off to the best of the starts for their 2012 season. Let's go and have a couple of words with a few of the riders. Right, Alex, uh, settling down last week on track in practice, uh, but practice counts for nothing. It's the real stuff tonight. Yeah, that's right. Practice was pretty good, and I uh, enjoy myself a fair bit, so hopefully we'll uh, enjoy myself again tonight and, um, yeah, hopefully win a few races and score a few points. It looked pretty quick out there on track last week, but, of course, as I say, practice counts for nothing. But uh, how did it feel last night at Swindon? Yeah, pretty good. Well, I haven't ridden in, uh, at Swindon for about two years now, but... Uh, I enjoyed it. It was it was quite a good track, and um, I was happy to get a win in my first race. And uh, struggled a little bit after that, but it was an elite league meeting, so I can't can't expect too much for the first meeting. It's not been the most hectic of winters on the bike for you, but are you feeling fit and ready to go? Yeah, I've been uh, doing a bit of work in Australia and doing a little bit of riding, but not too much. And uh, what I did do in Australia, I was pretty happy with, so I uh, can't complain. Yeah. So um, yeah, you did the under 21s, and that was pretty good for you. Yeah, it was pretty good. I uh, ended up getting third, so that was uh, that was really good. Uh, so I've qualified for the World Under-21 Qualifier, uh, so I can't complain with that. Injury? Yeah, injury already. <laughs> <laughs> and sponsorship from uh, Motorcycling Australia, I believe? Yeah, I got a little bit of um, money from Australia, uh, from Motorcycling Australia. It was pretty good. Um, every little helps, I suppose, but uh, yeah, it was good. Does that amount to somewhere around about a grand of UK or not? It's a thousand Australian dollars, so... Uh, yeah. So about, about 500 UK or something like that? Yeah, a little bit more than that, I think, but not too much, but... Uh, yeah. Every little bit helps. Yeah, that's right, exactly. That went towards my licence, so yeah, it's, it all helps, yeah. Well done. Have a good one tonight. Thank you. Cheers. Right, Nick, a thin end of the season so far, but you've had a couple of meetings. How's it been? Yeah, everything's started pretty good, I think, for me, and um, I rode at Swindon twice so far and had a few little bike problems, but feel good the bikes feel pretty good and yeah looking forward to the rest of the season it's uh, obviously a season to follow after being with Glasgow and winning uh, the, the league last year uh, Swindon looking for a better season than last year that'll be something to build on yeah definitely we had it I had a good year last year with Glasgow and this year I'm stepping up full-time elite so hopefully we can all do, do good and win the league with Swindon as well for sure there wouldn't have been any shortage of offers if you'd fancied doing the doubling up bit would there uh, no, I did have a few offers for Premier League, but because of the two double up riders in one team or something, I couldn't do it. So, but maybe later on in the season, if it has to happen, might do Premier League as well. OK, but you're obviously full of confidence in the Elite League for this year. Yeah, everything's been going well, so I feel good. My bikes are good and, yeah, I am pretty confident, to be honest. If we haven't seen you on track, Danny, we've seen you in the bar, so you're quite familiar with the place, aren't you? Yeah, I've rode here a few times with Glasgow and... Haven't really gone that well, to be honest, but everything's going good so far, and I, I think I can put me past behind me, so. <laughs> good luck tonight. Thank you. Well, good to hear from Alex and also from Nick Morris. And well, it's great to be filming here at uh, the Oak Tree Arena this year as uh, the Rebel Rooster and uh, the two teams are aboard the parade vehicle. A very good sized crowd indeed has turned up for this uh, opening night fixture here in Somerset it's been a beautiful day here we had a good spell of late certainly not March weather as the photographers just take an opening season photograph of the two teams and we'll take a look at the, them in detail Troy Batchelor he rides at number one for Swindon at number two it is Nick Morris number three it is Simon Stead back up for his third season with the Robins and the captain this year, Peter Kilderman, he rides at number four. Another serious looking Dane. He scored five points in the first leg last night when Swindon ran out 53 41 victory. Victors, that man's Anderson, he scored 13. He'll be hoping for a much more injury free season this year <coughs> at number six. It is Kenny Ingalls riding for Workington this year in the Premier League. And he's also the Swindon number eight. But, uh, say, riding at uh, number six here this evening. 
has ridden here on several occasions. And at number seven, it is Robin Aspergren, who lost his team place, of course, at Newport, sadly, with their demise over to the Somerset Rebels. And at number one, coming in as a guest, it is Darcy Ward. You certainly couldn't pick a better guest than that, the number one rider in the Elite League averages from last season. At number two, it is James Wright. Had a few meetings for Somerset last year and has been recalled by the management. At number three, it is Sam Masters, the captain, the Premier League Riders champion. Of course, he missed the last month of the season with his band last year. No repeat of that this season, I'm sure. Klaus Vissing, he rides at number four. The Lanky Dane at number five. Another man from Denmark, that is Charlie Jeddak, coming in as a guest here this evening. Another rider who, of course, not, riding up, not to line up for Newport this season after all. Alex Davis is at number six. He did enough to impress last year to get a recall. And Carl Newman, he returns to the Somerset side at number seven. That's how the two teams line up in this interleague challenge match underway shortly. Oh, well, oh, sorry, we just forgot Tom Perry there as well. How could we forget Tom? Tall young Englishman. He's going to share his rides with Carl this evening. So here we go then for heat number one of this interleague challenge. As we say, the two teams met at Swindon 24 hours ago, resulting in a 53-41 victory for the Robins, with Darcy Ward really guessing for Somerset on that occasion as well and scored at 16 points just missing out in one ride when he went on as a tactical ride and uh, finished in second place behind Hans Anderson so we got uh, Darcy Ward really comes out off gate number three in this uh, opening race his partner James Wright comes out off at gate number one off gate number two it is Nick Morris and uh, from the outside, it is Troy Batchelor. Batchelor, he scored at Pate 12 last night on his Swindon debut for this season. Back with the Robins. After a couple of seasons away, rode for Peterborough last year. As the riders were taking their time, getting ready to come up to the start. Of course, Somerset sponsored by Cases this season. New sponsorship deal for them. So the uh, Casey's Rebels select side about to get underway. Up fly the Tate, heat number one, and into that first corner when it is the rider in blue. That's James Wright, he's made a brilliant start, as has uh, Darcy Ward. He's come around the outside, so the perfect start for the uh, Somerset Rebels here this evening. It is uh, Darcy Ward who leads away from uh, James Wright in second, with uh, Batchelor in third and Nick Morris who has ridden here several times. He's uh, at the back. It's very fast, pacey circuit. And uh, well, it's uh, the uh, Rebels uh, who are on a 5-1 in the opening heat here as uh, Darcy Ward well, he, uh, had four wins and uh, that second place uh, last evening. It looks like he's he finished with a win in heat number 15. It looks like he's going to start with one in heat number one here tonight as uh, he leads the way. One of the most exciting Speedway talents in world at Speedway at the moment is Darcy. He's going to come round and take the chequered flag. Second place, that goes to James Wright. Third spot only to Troy Batchelor. So that's an excellent start for the home side with that 5-1 in heat number one. And it's great to team up with Nigel Thomas as well again that this year after many years when he used to help us out at Exeter another track of course sadly no longer racing speedway but hopefully it will be at some time in the future the crowd enjoying that 5-1 in the first race as we come on to heat number two then and the line line up at for this one, it sees that Kenny Ingalls coming out off gate number one. Alex Davis is off gate number two. Gate number three, that sees Carl Newman. And from the outside, it is Robin Asprigan. There's four riders coming out there. The reserves eat this one. 
start Marshall. He's just trying to get the riders up to line. Mick Postlewhite, the referee here this evening. As heat number two gets underway, although it doesn't really fall the rider in at red, that is Cole Newman. He's had engine failure at the line, but out in front it is Ingalls that leads the way from Asprigan in second with Alex Davis in third. So Swindon, well they were on the wrong end of a 5-1 in heat number one, but it looks like they could be getting one here in heat number two because it is the two reserves. It is Robin Asprigan and Kenny Ingalls who are on a 5-1. Corresponding race last evening resulted in a 3 all. Alex Davis taking the victory, but uh, he's back in, uh, in. He's uh, had to pull out onto the centre green this one with the engine failure. So Tom Perry is who's uh, giving chase. Uh, I think, I think Frank, we may have said Carl Newman. Of course, it is Tom Perry who's uh, coming out in this one. These early season folks uh, make the odd mistake along the way as. Uh, Kenny Ingalls, where he's making no mistakes whatsoever. He's going to take the victory in heat number two. Second place goes to Astrigan. Third spot to Tom Perry with Alex Davis making his way back to the pits following his engine failure out of the start line. And, well, that's levelled the scores up at six points apiece after two races in this uh, interleague challenge. As we move on to heat number three, Klaus Vissing, he comes out off gate number one. Simon Stead is off gate number two. Sam Masters comes out off gate number three. And uh, Peter Kilderman, he could prove to be one of the uh, trump cards for the Robins this year. He comes out off gate number four. Swindon, where they finished bottom of the elite league table last season. It really was a torrid, torrid season for them in 2011. They'll be hoping for much better fortunes in 2012. Simon Stead, the only rider to be retained by the promotion from last season. So get ready for race number three. Sam Masters, the Premier League Riders champion. He scored five points last night, didn't have a race win. Klaus Vissing did. He'd only scored one in his first three rides, but won his final outing, so at least he was pleased to get a victory in his last outing. As heat number three looks like we're ready. As the tapes fly up and out as folks, Sam Masters, what a brilliant start that was for him. Off gate number three, he leads the way and Klaus Vissing has gone around the inside as well to join him out in front. So we had a 5-1 in the opening two races and this could be another one in the third race. As Masters leads the way from Vissing in second place, Kilderman is in third. And surprise, surprise, it is Simon Stead in last place as... They come around a complete lap number two. It is Sam Masters who's looking as if he's untroubled out in front. He leads the way. Missing holding off Kilderman at the moment. The two Danes battling out for second spot. As Simon Stead, well, he's behind his teammate. It's a 5 1 for the Somerset Rebels in this heat number three. And it's going to be a welcome win for Masters. So his first race back following his well publicised ban towards the end of last season he wins heat number three, second place goes to Klaus Vissing, great ride lap by Klaus on his debut here for Somerset, first spot to Kilderman Simon Stead, no points for him it's another 5-1 for Somerset their third, their sec sorry their second in the opening three races terrific stuff that is and they now lead by 11 points to 7 and weed is from the two Somerset Rebels we move on to race number 4 and this one where it sees Carl Newman coming out for his first ride he's off gate number 1 off gate number 2 it is Robin Aspergan off gate 3 Charlie Jeddah and Hans Anderson he comes out off at gate number four. Be interested to see how, how Hans goes around this circuit. Not sure if he's ridden here before. May have done in an individual meeting perhaps, but let's see how he goes. Heat number four 
is about to go underway, Mick Fossil-White, he releases the tape, and into that first bend, where well, it's a great start there by the number seven for Swindon, that's Peter Kill, remember, an even better one by Cole Newman, although Newman, well, he's been passed on the outside by Asprigan, rather not Kill, and of course it is Asprigan who leads away from Newman in second, Charlie Jenner back in third, Hans Anderson, he's in last place, that's a huge surprise, the former Grand Prix rider, Hopes to get back in the series at 4 2013. Of course, we've got a GP just next weekend, would you believe, in New Zealand. Certainly, uh, things moving a pace in the Grand Prix at this seat this uh, year with uh, the uh, trip uh, out of uh, mainland Europe to the other side of the world, down to New Zealand. And uh, it's going to be the rider in yellow who's uh, going to win this way race. Robin Asprigan is who's out in front from Charlie Jenner in second place. Carl Newman is back in third. Hans Anderson in last place, and that's an excellent shared heat for the Somerset Rebels, keeping Hans Anderson at bay. Carl Newman, oh, that was superb for him. He did lead the way out of the start, but he got passed by Aspergan on the outside, but nonetheless, he can be very pleased indeed with his paid second place. And that's our first shared heat of the meeting. And the, the lead remains at four points for the home side. Aspergan, the race winner. We come on to heat number five then, and this one where it sees Nick Morris coming out off gate number one, didn't score in his first ride in heat number one. Sam Masters, he's off gate number two, he certainly did. He took that victory in uh, heat number three off uh, gate number three. We got to Troy Batchelor, he only scored a point in the opening race, and from the outside, it is uh, Klaus Vissing who got that paid win in uh, his first ride, so heat number five. Somerset leading by 14 points to 10 as the race gets underway. And it's the fast gate in Sam Masters who's made the start. He leads the way. Vissin trying a big move around the outside. He's got past Nick Morris and he's trying to find a way past Troy Batchelor. Brilliant action here. It's such a good racing track here. We're so we're delighted to be filming here in 2012. And in fact, just out of shot there, Nick Morris has taken a tumble. And it looks like the race is going to be stopped. Troy Batchelor has moved through in the first place. And, uh, well, indeed, there is Morris. He's down on track. The uh, red lights are on. The heat, well, it has been stopped. Just uh, taking a fall there. And uh, hopefully Nick is going to be able to get back to his feet. Indeed, he is. And, uh, well, he's going to be excluded being the cause of the stoppage. So Swindon only going with one rider in the rerun of heat number five. And the riders are back at the start line for this one then. Heat number five, the rerun. Oh, bit of movement there by Troy Batchelor, but uh, Mick Possel White has let the race run. And it is Masters who leads the way. Batchelor in second place with Klaus Vissin in third. It's a 4-2 heat advantage for Somerset in heat number five. As Masters leads the way then from uh, fellow Australian. Troy Batchelor in second place, Batchelor has been passed there by Klaus Vissing and Batchelor, well he's not happy at all there with Vissing as at Somerset, well they move on to a 5-1 in this interleague challenge as uh, Sam Masters come round to, comes round a complete lap number two, he's out in front from Vissing in second place, Troy Batchelor, well, I don't think he was too pleased with Vissing's riding there but uh, well, it was a hard but fair challenge and now Batchelor when he's chasing down Vissing as they come around and start the final lap and here comes Batchelor on the inside and well, he's doing what Vissing did to him a couple of laps to go he's moved through in a second place and now he's beckoning him to, to try and close him once again tripping action in heat number five as Sam Masters wins it second place goes to Batchelor Vissing gets a point in third at a cracking heat of speedway that one and a passing and repassing in heat number five and it results in a 4-2 heat advantage for the Somerset Rebels Sam Masters and Klaus Vissing over Troy Batchelor getting a 4-2 the Rebels moving into a six point lead great stuff As we come on to heat number six and the lineup for this one, where it sees Darcy Ward coming out off gate number one, 
Winner of heat number one, Hans Anderson comes out off gate number two. He's got a juicy lineup off gate number three. We got to James Wright. He combined with Darcy for a 5 1 in the opening race. And from the outside, Kenny Ingalls, who won at heat number two. Hans Anderson, of course, where he but very surprisingly finished at the back in his first ride. I'm not sure he's going to do that in this one. So it may well have been his first meeting here at his first ever race here at the Oak Tree Arena. As we get ready then for heat number six, Ward's got the advantage of the inside gate position. Can he make it tell? into that first bend where he's made a good start he's, he pushes Anderson out wide but Hans has got the speed coming out of the second bend and he's moved through in the first place here's Hans Anderson where we, where he's obviously too good a rider to, to not score any points in too many rides and he's got through in the first place here and Kenny Ingalls where he's just brushed aside James Wright so it's a 4-2 heat advantage for the Swindon Robins in heat number six as Anderson leads away from Ward in second place and of course, when he defeated Darcy, inflicting Darcy's only defeat last night at Blunsdon, and it looks like he's going to beat him again here in this one. Anderson out in front from Ward in second place. Kenny Ingalls, he's impressed, impressed us so far. He's back in third, having found a way past James Wright. And as they come round to take the chequered flag, it's Hans Anderson who takes the win. Second place goes to Klaus to Darcy Ward. Kenny Ingalls in third. James Wright at the back. A 4-2 for the visitors. 20 points to 16 the lead. Heat number six was sponsored by Bridgewater Tires and Exhaust. Let's hear it please for the winner in white, Hans Anderson. Hey, as we come on to race number seven and the lineup for this one, uh, we've got uh, Simon Stick coming out off gate number one. He surprisingly failed to score in his first ride. Charlie Jeddah comes out off gate number two and uh, he scored at two points in his first outing of uh, gate number three. We've got uh, Peter Kilderman. He scored a point in his first ride and uh, from the outside it is uh, Alex Davis who uh, had that engine failure on the start line in uh, his first outing. So uh, it always uh, promised to be a close uh, contest this meeting between these two sides, of course both rather select sides, especially the Rebels with a couple of guests in as heat number seven gets underway into that first bend. And when it is Charlie Jeddah who's made a great start, he leads the way. Although he's being challenged by Simon Stead. Here comes Jeddah though, around the outside. He's moved through in the first place. Stead in second place. Better ride by him. Kilderman in third with Alex Davis at the back. Oh, Stead, well, he's got very close to the safety fence there. Exiting the full turn. And Alex Davis, well, he's trying to find a way past Steady. As at Charlie Jeddah, well, he's had engine failure, so that's very bad luck for him. It's turned a shared heat into a 5 1 for the Swindon Robins as Kilderman and Stead lead the way. Steady, well, he was certainly under pressure from Alex Davis for a half a lap there. And well, now he's looked like he's going to set sail for a victory or a paid win here. Good team riding now between the two Robins riders as Stead, well, he's turning on the speed here. He's come through to lead the way. He's going to collect his first points of the meeting with a victory, just as Hans Anderson did the same. Second place goes to Kilderman, third spot to Alex Davis, a 5-1 for the visitors then. And that levels things up at 21 points apiece. And a good 5-1 there. But Charlie Jeddah, well, he certainly was unlucky to have that engine yeah, failure yeah, whilst in front could cost uh, the Rebels the dear we move on to heat number 8 and the line up where we see Robin Aspergan coming out off gate number 1 unbeaten from his first two rides Tom Perry comes out off gate number 2 Nick Morris is off gate number 3 hasn't scored a point so far but good to see he's back out on track 
following that spill in his last outing and off gate number four James Wright had that paid win and then ran a last in heat number six when he was passed by Kenny Ingalls wouldn't have been too pleased with that as we settle down for heat number eight then start Marshall just to trying to get James Wright to up to the tapes a little bit more but he's still moving back slightly heat number eight up they go, the tapes go up and out of the start, where well, has gone, James Wright, he's made a great gate off a of four, he leads the way, exiting the second bend from Asper Gooding, second place, the unbeaten Swindon Robbins rider, he's in second spot, here comes Tom Perry on the inside, oh but Nick Morrison, he's got through in the third, Morris fighting back on the inside of Perry, great action for the minor places here, in heat number eight, here comes Perry once again around the outside of Morris, what terrific racing, here at the Oak Tree Arena in this interleague challenge in heat number eight. Perry back in third place now. Meanwhile out in front, James Wright, he's been put under pressure from Robin Aspergan. It's a 4-2 for the Rebels at the moment as the riders come around to start the final lap. It is James Wright who still leads the way there to be his first race win of the meeting. Second place it is Aspergan, third spot. It is Tom Perry after that great battle with Nick Morris. It's going to be a 4-2 for the Somerset Rebels and they're going to retake the lead as James Wright takes the win. And uh, well, excellent race in there in heat number eight. And we can see here how Tom Perry found a way past. Brilliant stuff in that one. Found a way past Nick Morris, a 4-2 for the home side. And they regain a slender two-point lead. Moving along to race number nine. And this one sees Hans Anderson coming out of gate one. Klaus Bissing comes out off gate number two, paid four from his first two ride. Kenny Ingalls is off at gate number three. He scored four points also. He's impressed us uh, with his first couple of outings. He has ridden here before with the Workington Comets. And uh, from the outside, it is Sam Masters, who's at certainly looked very impressive so far. Two rides, two race victories. As uh, he uh, comes out off gate number four, which was victorious for... James Wright, of course, in the last race. That's the only race winner so far off of that gate position. Let's see if Masters can replicate Wright here in heat number nine. The race gets underway. He's made a pretty good start, though. He's got caught in traffic there. It is the rider in white. Hans Anderson who leads the way from Fishing in second place. Masters is in third. Kenny Ingalls, the American, is at the back as the riders come around to complete the opening lap then it is, it is Hans Anderson who leads the way stretching his lead ahead of Vissing in second place third spot it is Sam Masters so any hopes he had of a maximum are going to disappear here in heat number nine with Ingalls in last position but it is Anderson one of the class riders here this evening who's going to come round and surely take his second victory as they start the final lap, he's out in front, missing, holding on to that second, Masters in third. It'll be just our second shared heat of the meeting as Hans, he collects his second race for a big win in a row. Two points goes to Bissing, one to Masters with Ingalls at the back. And so another shared heat and it means that the home side remain two points in front with six heats remaining. Well done to the Rebels, backing in second and third for a shared heat and keeping that two point advantage. But uh, somewhat slowly coming around, hopefully, yes, he's limbering up for a win and not really touching the back back. As we move on to heat number 10, Peter Kilderman comes out off gate number 1, James Wright is off at gate number 2, Simon Stick comes out off gate number 3, won his last ride after last place in his first outing, and from the outside we've got Darcy Ward, a win and a second place behind Anderson's for 
Darcy so far as they're just uh, taking their time at the start line. So seems some very keen action here so far this evening. going to see some brilliant action here at the Oak Tree Arena in 2012. So we are, once again we are delighted to be filming here. We have filmed a couple of uh, Premier League pairs of events and also men at Cunningham's testimonial meeting here back in 2006 as at Darcy Ward with normal service being resumed. He's out in front from <coughs> Kilderman in second place. Simon Stead is in third. James Wright after winning his last ride Having made a great start, he uh, did not get out of the gate in this one. He's at the back, so again, it could be a shared heat in race number 10. This will be our second in a row as Ward leads the way. Darcy, of course, lining up for Paul this year. Once again, the one half of the Turbo Twins alongside Chrissy Holder. And uh, well, a great DVD that we produced of them in the winter. Balls to the wall, the title. <laughs> that was the title picked by Chrissy Holder. And uh, it certainly was a, a great description of some of their racing. But it's a pretty run-of-the-mill win there for Darcy in heat. Number 10, second place goes to Kilderman. Third spot to Stead. James Wright uh, finishes his rides with the last place. And uh, still the Somerset Rebels remain a couple of points in front two-thirds of the way through this uh, interleague challenge Darcy winning his second race of the meeting here he comes this in a big round of applause for the man winning heat number 10 sponsored by Salt Express in red Darcy Ward <coughs> and moving on to heat number 11 and only three riders Charlie Jenner has been disqualified at under the two minute time allowance he's only going with three riders and it is Carl Newman who's taking the lead down the back straight from Troy Batchelor in second and Nick Morris is back in first and Carl Newman it is who leads the way and this is brilliant stuff from the reserve although he's been passed now by Troy Batchelor Batchelor is then who's out in front but here comes Newman back on the inside great action in heat number 11 as Newman leads it from Batchelor in second Batchelor coming back at Newman on the inside and he retakes the lead but a terrific ride by Carl to hold off Troy for a lap or so, finding a way past him until Bachelors found a way back past the uh, Swift, the uh, Somerset Reserve. It is a 4-2 for the Robins. Unfortunate uh, problems for Charlie Jenner, who did come out on track, but uh, engine problems meant he had to go back pit side, and uh, well, he could not get back out in time. So uh, going with just the three riders as uh, Bachelor, Willie he wins his uh, first race of the meeting. Terrific battle for that lead, though, between him and Carl well, Newman, like Newman finding a way past line, only for Bachelor to return the, the compliment and uh, well, four to four well, for well, the visitors well. then and uh, that the uh, means the visitors draw level as we move on to heat number 12 and the line up for this one let's see Sam Masters coming out off gate number one off at gate number two, we got to Kenny Ingalls. Gate number three, that sees Tom Perry. And from the outside, we have uh, Simon Stead, who has had a mixed bag so far this evening. A steady, a last, a win, and then a paid second. And uh, well, here he comes up to the start line. As uh, we get ready for heat number 12 which way this meeting going to go. So it resulted in a 12-point win for Swindon last evening. Somerset, I'm sure they'll just be happy for victory here tonight as heat number 12 gets underway. And into that first bend, well, it's the rider in red, Sam Masters, who could be returning to winning ways. He's leads it, won his first two rides, and he's held in front in this one, Simon Stead. Is in second place, Peter Kilderman. Also, Kenny Ingalls is uh, back in third with uh, Tom Perry at the back. Stead, well, he's putting Masters under pressure. The battle of the two number threes, and it is Masters who leads at the moment. Of course, he's already, already beaten Steady back in uh, heat number three, and he looks like he could be getting the double over him. The uh, 
current Premier League Riders champion is held in front from staying in second place, third spot. It is Kenny Ingalls with Tom Perry at the back in this one, having scored in his first two rides. So Masters looks if he's going to claim another win here. Could well be seeing him in the nominated heat, I would have thought, as well. And I'm sure he's going to come all down to that final race. Been very tight between the two teams. Never been more than four points between them. As Masters wins his third race of the night. Second place goes to Stead. First spot to Ingalls with Perry at the back. And at 12 heats gone, three to go. Still absolutely nothing to divide the two teams. 36 points apiece. And Sam, well, I'm sure we'll be seeing him out for one more race. He's had three wins out of four. And the winner in red, Kellen Spotted Race, Sam Masters. As we get ready for heat number 13, always an eagerly anticipated race, this one. We've got Troy Batchelor out off gate number one. He has scored six points so far. Off gate number two, we've got Darcy Ward. He's on eight. Off at gate number three, we've got Hans Anderson. He's also on six. And from the outside, Charlie Jetta, who's on a couple of points, would have been on... A Certainly more than that, he would have been on five. Of course, he had that engine failure in his second ride and then failed to make it out to the start line in his third outing. So it's been a troubled evening for Charlie, one of the two guests for the Somerset Rebels here this evening. Heat number 13, 36 points apiece. It's underway and into that first bend where Bachelor has made a good start. Fellow Aussie Darcy Ward has gone with him though, and it is Batcher who leads it from Ward in second place. Jedda is in third, Anderson at the back. So we've got two Danes and two Australians in uh, heat number 13, and it is one of the Aussies that is well, it's a 5 1 to Australia at the moment, of course. Team Australia over Team Denmark as uh, Batchelor leads the way from Darcy Ward in second place, giving chase. He uh, never knows when he's beaten, of course. I'm sure the last couple of laps are going to be exciting as he chases down Batchelor. Good race for third between Jedda and Anderson, which Charlie is just winning at the moment as Batchelor, when he won his last ride, is he going to take victory here in heat number 13? He's on the final lap, and he's a couple of bite lengths up over Darcy Ward. They go down the back straight for the final time, and it looks as if Batchelor is going to gain a win here, get his revenge over Darcy for his defeat in heat number one. He certainly is. Batchelor wins it from Ward in second. Third spot goes to Charlie Jetta with Hans Anderson. He's had a couple of wins, but also a couple of last places. He finishes at the back. Another shared heat. And, uh, well, there's still nothing between the two teams with two races to go. 39 points apiece. So we are guaranteed a last heat decider. As we move on to heat number 14 then, and at the lineup, Alex Davis comes out off gate number one. One point so far from his two rides, although he did have that engine failure, of course, on the line in his first out in, so can't really count that one. He's off at the inside off gate number two. We've got Peter Kilderman. He scored at pace six so far, gate number three, as he's close missing from the outside, Robert Aspergan. And, uh, well, it is Kilderman, he's given Bissin a bit of a nudge there, and that's allowed Alex Davis to take up the lead. Davis it is, the young Australian who is out in front. He's got Norrie Allen out helping him out in the pits here this evening. The uh, former mechanic, of course, of Ivan Major and Mark Lauren, both world champions. Ivan six times in his uh, speedway life, of course, as they come round a complete lap number two. It is Davis who leads the way from... Uh, the rider in white, that is Peter Kilderman in second. Klaus Vissing is in third. Aspergan at the back. It's a 4-2 for the home side, and this would see them take a two-point lead going into the final race if it stays like this. As Alex Davis with this in a brilliant ride by him to keep Kilderman behind him. Third spot is still goes with Vissing. Here comes it. Kilderman around the outside of Davis trying to wait, find a way through, but Alex Davis, is he going to be able to hold on? It's going to be a race to the line as they cross the checkered flag, and Davis just takes the victory. Second place, Kilderman, third spot, goes to Cleo Svissin, a tremendous race in heat, number 14. And Alex Davis taking the win then, 
Kilderman second, this in third, Asprigan at the back, failing to score for the first time this evening. It results in a 4-2 for the home side. They take a two-point lead going into heat number 15. Can they hold on for the victory? The Somerset fans will certainly be open to look at that as Davis with his steel shoe came off maybe on that last lap. Looked at a great round of applause for the young Aussie. So it all comes down to this 15th and final race, this interleague challenge match. The team manager for Swindon, Alan Rossiter. Great to see Roscoe back at the Abbey Stadium. He's off. He has brought out. He's off gate number one. He's brought out Troy Bachelor off at gate number one, and Peter Kildman. He gets the nod, nod over Hans Anderson and Simon Stead. He comes out off gate number three. <coughs> Although he's scored pretty well as. Peter, he scored paid eight from his four rides. Off gate number two, it is Darcy Ward, just uh, dropped a couple of points so far. And uh, well, he's dropped one from that ride on the inside, Troy Battery over to get revenge from the outside. It is Sam Masters, had three wins and a paid second. Heat number 15, a three all will do it for the home side. As a bachelor, when he's had engine failure on the line, well, in fact, he's had engine failure, but he has got going. So a few problems there out of the start for Batch. But uh, well, it looks as if this is handed victory to the uh, Somerset Rebel Select as uh, Darcy Ward leads the way from Sam Masters in second. Peter Kilderman giving chase back in third. Troy Batchelor, well, surely his race is run, having made it. problems out of the start as uh, Darcy Ward heading towards his third victory of the evening. Masters go, just makes a slight mistake, gets a bit of lift, and he's uh, dropped back into third place now, although here he comes on the inside. Oh, Kilderman regains second, but Peter comes back around the outside. Brilliant action once again in heat number 15. And, uh, oh, Kilderman getting some lift as well there. Darcy Ward, when he's missing all the action, he's out in front. Kilderman, well, it looks like he's got second place assured now. Third spot is Sam Masters. Troy Batcher at the back. It's going to be a 4-2 for the home side. And they are going to take victory here this evening. Darcy Ward wins his third race of the night. Two points goes to Peter Kilderman. 1-2 Sam Masters. Troy Batcher having problems out the start line. Finishes at the back. It's a 4-2 in the final race. Great action in heat number 15. Once again between Masters and Kilderman. Kilderman eventually gaining the upper hand and getting that second place. It does result in a 4-2 for the home side then and a 47-43 victory. Well done to the Somerset Rebels select, Darcy Ward and all. Sam Masters joining him for that 5-1, 4-2 in heat number 15. Sam celebrates with a wheelie. And uh, well, here come the Somerset Rebels on their lap of honour. Gary May and he's out on track as well. Steve Bishop there. Bish also. As they greet their adoring fans. Hey, an excellent opening here at the Oak Tree Arena. We thoroughly enjoyed it. We hope you've enjoyed what uh, we brought to you as well. There will be plenty more DVDs and great meetings, no doubt, throughout the season. Klaus, solid start for you tonight. You put in a lot of laps of practice last week and that seemed to pay off tonight. I won't call it solid, but uh, I'm getting there and that's why I practiced so much last week as well, to just getting in form again and just getting some heat on the mobiles. So, yeah, I'll get there in the end, no problem. We weren't maybe expect well, we certainly weren't expected to win on aggregate. Um, we weren't maybe expected to win tonight, but uh, the Rebels have done it. We definitely, we was going for it, so uh, that, that was what we expected. Uh, we didn't want to just let them go easily and, and we did and then won in the end and that was really good. Um, and a big thanks to Dice as well, he's, he's really fast around here. I think Troy would uh, agree that you didn't want to give it up easily because you certainly weren't going to give him that second place earlier on, were you? No chance, no chance and uh, I'll get there, no problem, I'll be better. Well we certainly saw enough tonight to suggest that you're going to score a lot of points for us and you're doubling up for Bellevue as well. Yeah, 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 but my, my first choice is still here and that's what I'm working for and I told that to Gary as well and Debbie is just, uh, this is what I'm really, really going for and what I'm really going to give 100% is Somerset. We've got to get off the track because Henry's going to mow us down. Great night's work for Klaus Vessing. Give him a round of applause, folks. Well, that brings to, uh, to an end tonight's meeting here at the Oak Tree Arena. Some great entertainment along the way and the Swindon Robins going back up the M5 with their tails between their legs, perhaps, and uh, maybe not the expected defeat that they came down for. Uh, the Rebels are really shining on track tonight, led off by Darcy Ward at the top uh, with a 
well, 17 points, what a great haul from him. But solid scoring from the Rebels, a little bit of misfortune engine-wise for Alex Davies and for Charlie Jada, all conspired to give us a great finish. We will hope to see you back next week. Good night.